lot. I think it's time to show, right? Uh, it was surprising. Now we, in the past, we only play with silicon. Now suddenly this time in this class, you find that silicon germanium is important. And then later I tell you that we have aluminum, gallium, nitride. And of course you have boron and phosphorus for doping in the past. But then I tell you that for aluminum, gallium, nitride or the silicon carbide, the dopant can be nitrogen or aluminum. And then we say we have diamond, we have gallium oxide. And then in resistive memory, we have what? Titanium light, half lium dioxide, titanium nitride. And I did not tell you we have zirconium, we have a um, uh, nickel here, conductive bridge with a copper, right? Of course, we also have a cobalt that is later we, uh, we did not mention for all those uh, silicide content. We keep expanding. Now, then I want to tell you another, in indium, we talk about indium gallium nitride. Now I'm going to show you a, something called phase change memory that is going to have antimony, telluride, okay? Of course, before we talk about gallium arsenide. We're covering more and more. And later, we're going to talk about spin, uh, uh, STT RAM, spin transfer top. Definitely all this is going to, which have a high uh, uh, magnetic magnetization will appear. Later we talk about superconductor, superconductor, niobium. So we have, going to cover all the whole periodic table. I miss a lot actually, if you look at other people's uh, paper about this, right? Almost everything except the radioactive one, right? So it is very exciting, this field. In the past, you only play with this few elements. Now it's everywhere. Now the one I want to talk about is the phase change memory, only one slide, but we just want to know how it works. I think there's a typo in this paper. It should be germanium, antimony, uh, terulium. Ter ter I might pronounce it wrong, right? This one, TE and SB, okay? Instead of SE, not selenium. So what is this? Again, it's two terminal. This is very important. We want two terminal for emergent memory because we can use this cross bar structure. So we have a top, we have a bottom, and what? No matter what, you always need the electro, right? The metal. So that is simple for everything. You just say that what type of electro, sometimes you need scan uh, oxygen scavenger, sometimes you need uh, copper uh, as the anode for oxidation or reduction for in the uh, CB RAM. But for phase change memory, it doesn't matter too much. Doesn't matter too much. The most important thing is that it has something called CGS, GS, sorry, GST, right, which is germanium, antimony, and terrarium. Okay, please try to check yourself how to pronounce later. GST. So what happened? It has two regions. It has an amorphous region. This is called A means amorphous. Can someone tell me, do you have a large resistance or small resistance for amorphous? material. How about this? Do you have a high resistance for a crystal material or a low resistance? Maybe you don't know. Anyone want to guess? Lower. Lower, right? So it's just like if you have learned about silicon, uh, so, solar cell, right? We sometimes we always say amorphous silicon. They have a lot of defect. They also have relatively worse resistivity when it's heavily doped, right? And crystalline usually has better resistivity, I mean, lower resistivity. The same for GST. So our goal is that I want to change the GST from crystalline to amorphous. I'm going to do this in my operation to expand and also contract 
the frontier of this GST. Okay, so if I want to have a have one conductive uh, element, low resistance state, right? So let me ask you: for low resistance state, should I have more crystalline CGST or AGST for re low resistance state? Resistance state. The electron go from here to here, right? I want to have low resistance state. Should I have more GST or less GST? More CGST. <laughs> Sorry, more CGST. Sorry, I asking. I even don't know what I'm talking about. Yes, more CGST. So I want it to be something like this. Okay. This is C. GST. If I want to have high resistance state, what do I want? Do I have more or less CGST? Less. Uh, less, yeah. Okay. Anyone have idea how I can change this? How I can make I'll defabricate the chip. How I can change the ratio between CGST and AGST? How do I do that? Any idea? Just see if you have a. Let's say no one invented this, right? If you have an idea, then we can. Then you can file a patent. Although someone filed already. This is called phase change memory. I guess now you understand why. We change from amorphous to crystalline. That's why it's called phase change. How do you change the phase of a material? Uh, electromagnetic field. Electromagnetic field, what else? What else you can you change your phase? High high temperature. Very good. High temperature. How can you apply a high temperature to 10 nanometer region? A big current. Exactly. That's what it does. Apply a high voltage to the one you want to program. Okay? So this is how it works. We first apply a high voltage. This is the current. This is the voltage. Assume you will start with the, you, you see this is low current. So this is the high resistance state. We apply the voltage. Okay, nothing happened. Well, very small current. Eventually, it has something called threshold effect. This one I won't explain here because it's still under debate, not very clear in the literature. Why suddenly we have a lot of current? They talk about something called, uh, Polar Laurent, uh, and then a valence alternation, uh, alternation pair of electron or whatever. And anyway, there's some mechanism make it start heating up. Okay, so this heating is because just now you say high current, dual heating. You call it dual heating? Right, with W equal to I times V, the power you generate is the current times the voltage. Okay. Once you go to this state, then you keep applying. You go to a pretty heat, pretty hot region. And in here, because it's hot, you have crystallization. You crystallize the amorphous GST. And that's how you Reset this fun frontier so you have more crystalline GST. Okay, so you see that I have high. If now I just come back, reduce the voltage, I am in the low resistance state. That is how I change from high resistance to resistance to set it, to set the bit. Is this clear? Any question about this? Right? So basically, nothing happened. I just have a high 
temperature and I crystallize it. And I think you did this experiment in high school or whatever, uh, or not, I don't know. You do this maybe when you're cooking, you see that uh, something change, I don't know, you cook tofu or I don't know, yeah, jelly or whatever. You give energy, so it reorganizes the atom, so it becomes in order, becomes crystalline. Then how do I reset it? Well, this time you need to apply even higher voltage so you go to the so-called reset zone. Here, it melts. Once it melts, you cool it. You just take off the voltage. You cool it very rapidly. Then you will have spontaneous crystallization everywhere. Okay, it's like the ice. I don't know if that's a good example, but uh, you just cool it from the water, let the water super cool, and then they all spontaneous crystallize. Then they are very tiny crystal or even just amorphous. Then you go back to the resistive amorphous state. Okay, so if you go from amorphous to crystalline, you heat it with high temperature, but not melt. So it gradually reorganize, heal it, if you want to change it back to amorphous, you hit it really hard, then it melts. And then suddenly remove the voltage, it cool down. Once it cool down, it will become amorphous because it's disorder. They don't have time to rearrange the atom from the disorder liquid. And that is phase change memory. And you see that the temperature profile control is very important. That's why people will do about how you can engineer this capping layer to reduce or enhance the heat dissipation. If this layer are not thermally conductive, it actually uh, make it easier to uh, make into amorphous. But on the other hand, uh, it also slower because it take longer time to cool down. Okay, and that's all I want to say about this. Any questions? Try, try to ask, right? Anything not clear? Is this type of memory used anywhere yet? Or is it just... Uh... Uh, so actually up to now still no... Uh, for neuromorphic memory, they are still not in mass production. PCM is promising uh, in IBM. IBM, they uh, have done uh, a lot of, on this. Actually, uh, last year I have a student, actually he turned out to be an intern in the uh, IBM and he's doing simulation for phase change memory using their tool. But they usually want to use this for neuromorphic computing, which I'm going to uh, mentioned later but now we just treat it as zero and one yeah at, to the best of my okay no i'm wrong let me say this this one is not you really use anywhere at this moment but remember last few years micron and intel they come up with a memory called what is it x memory i suddenly forgot the name they have this uh memory that is supposed to be there 10 times faster than DRAM. And let me Google quickly. This is a very important one. Icon Intel, you just uh, do this new memory, right? Oh, cross point memory, X point, right? They call it X point. Cross point memory, Micron and Intel. Now they don't tell you what it is. This is commercial secret, right? But everyone think that it is phase change memory, but not exactly the same, right? But they use this one to increase the speed, increase the density. So they are in production already and they are expensive. You buy this for your server, okay? Try to uh, Google cross point memory, X memory from Micron and Intel, but, but now only Intel produce it. Micron somehow just sell everything to Intel. Okay, any other questions? 
It seems like uh, it would be slow because of the heating. Is it pretty fast? I mean, in terms of yeah. no, you were good, good point, right? Because you feel, but they are very small, only ten nanometer scale, and then the point will come to the memory architecture. You are going to do reset all at the same time. Just like fresh memory. Fresh memory take a very long time to erase. So whenever they erase, they erase the whole block. Like maybe one megabyte or 10 megabytes. So then it will compensate the problem. Yeah, so I don't know the detail, but you need the architectural level to uh, compensate for this. Another thing is the power consumption. Hey, it takes a lot of energy to melt something, okay? So, but however, the advantage of this is when you go smaller, you use less energy. And this has a better, more, I mean, more promising to go smaller uh, in certain cases. So there are lots of trade-off and also related to retention, et cetera, right? So I'm not good enough to give you all these comments, but you can read the paper I uploaded. So there are lots of trade-off, right? In the interview, if someone asks you, you just dump all this term, you, you will be good. You say, I need to consider the speed, right speed, read speed, the retention, right? You write something, how long it's going to last, right? The reliability. If I keep writing for one million time, is it going to break, to break, right? And then, yeah, something like this, right? And then you can say, well, uh, the heat tank. But, but the point is, this is exactly as an engineer, I'm very glad that you asked that, right? Nothing is perfect. Engineering is always a trade-off. If you don't need trade-off, just means the problem you have was not optimal, right? It means we did a lousy job, that's why we don't have trade-off. Otherwise, everything has a trade-off. And I'm glad you asked that. And you keep asking yourself, you see a lot of problems. And if you can solve, you know, to be a successful engineer or successful company, after all, is to find the right trade-off. Everyone is as smart as you, but you might be the one find the right trade-off and the right market, then you are successful. Your product might not be better than others. Right? Same in the uh, company, uh, even promotion or whatever. Find the right trade-off. And before that, you need all this knowledge. Okay, any other questions? Okay, I know I talk a lot. Um, I just want to give you a little bit more information. This is in the order of maybe 50 nanometer by 30 nanometer. Okay, in, uh, for this box, for example, this is 30, that's 50 nanometer. This is still large. Okay, and this one was used in DVD in the past. Okay, I don't write it, otherwise it's probably I'm talking about the DVD. A phase change actually come from uh, DVD, writable DVD. I don't know if you guys still uh, use DVD or you heard of DVD, maybe you're too young. Okay, uh, 